Today we're going to talk about how to install the TMC 5160 Pro on the Big Tree Tech GTR version 1. Now there's a couple of things you need to know on this board. Obviously there is an X stepper, a Y stepper, a Z stepper, then we have E0, E1, and E2. Now notice there's two ports for the Z stepper here. These are actually jumped at the moment, but if you were to use a second NEMA connection, then you would remove these. So the thing that we need to understand about this right now is that right now we need to know what the configuration will be for the jumpers. Now the board does come in a spy configuration which is how the TMC 5160 Pro does operate. But I'll show you this in just a moment. So let's go over to the desktop for a second so you can see this. On the desktop, first of all, what we want to do is find the manual. So if we click over here for repositories, and then we type GTR, it'll bring us to the actual page where you can download the manual or you can read it here. In this case, I've already downloaded it and loaded it up. So I'll bring it up here real quick. Now, this is the GTR version 1.0 and it's the operating instruction manual. So I'm not gonna scroll all the way to it. I'm just gonna jump to it here on page 14 to start where the steppers are. So as you can see right here, we have stepper, which is not our stepper type. So they show what the actual configuration might be for these type steppers. Then further down, we have the UART configuration, which we are not as well. So we're using SPY, which is serial peripheral interface. So we need to find that configuration, which is right here for SPY mode. So as you can see, the jumpers are in the correct place at the moment. Now we're actually going to be using sensorless homing as well. So the pins over here that you see, we're going to use those for actual sensorless homing. So if you buy the pro version and you don't want sensorless homing, you may have to modify your stepper so that it doesn't have the actual pin for the diag mode. And I'm trying to find that real quick for you here. So this is what they're talking about. You'll have to clip it off. But in that case, I would suggest buying the regular TMC 5160 that doesn't have the pro version. So these pins will not exist. So now that we have that understood, what we're gonna have to do next is actually load the actual firmware. In order to do that, what we need to do is download it. So if you go over to the Marlin page and you click on download, and then you click on the zip version over here, it'll download your computer. Now I've already done this. So let me show you that real quick. So if I go over to my downloads folder, you can see right here that I have the Marlin version 2.1 and all you have to do is right click and click extract all and that will give you this folder so over in VS code what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the Explorer then open folder then we're gonna click on downloads and then we're gonna go to the Marlin 2.11 Marlin 2.1.1 again and then we're gonna click select folder Inside here, this will take a moment to load. So what I'm gonna do is go back over to the desktop for a second. So you can see on my actual desktop, what we're doing here. So this is the Pro, it already has a built-in uh, heat sink here. And then on the bottom, you can see the pins and how they line up over here. So the yellow is gonna be closest to us being the red side and black is gonna be the other side. So we're just gonna plug it in. Now, normally you would use a cooling fan when using this, 
But for brevity in this tutorial, I'm leaving that step out and we'll cover it in the future or in my previous tutorials, which are in the playlist in the description of this tutorial. The other thing I want to show you real quick is that we have to hook up the actual power. Now, as you can see right here, I've marked in previous tutorials what voltages and ground is for both of these. So these are for your actual motors. So this is actually for your board logic. I'm using a 24 volt power supply. So I'm going to slide this into here and I'm going to tighten this down. Then I'm going to do the same for the ground and tighten this down as well. Then I'm going to do the same over here for the voltage for the steppers. And I'll show you something about the steppers in a moment, just so you understand that there's more to them than there actually is being presented to you. And I'll leave a link for the data sheet for you in a moment in the description. So now that we've got that set, let's go back over to the desktop of the computer. And as you can see, it's not configured yet. So I'll show you this in just a second, but I'm gonna go over to the web browser for a second and show you that there's another link inside Big Tree Tech where you can search on your TMC5160. So if I were to go back over to here and click on repository and then click or type TMC5160, it'll bring us to not the pro version, but the actual data sheet for it. Now I already have that up and open. So I wanted to show you this real quick. As you can see, it's talking about what the product has. So we're gonna be working with Stealth Chop. This is Stealth Chop 2 mode. Basically it's reduced noise stepping and then we're also going to be using stall guard and the stall guard is actually going to be used for the sensorless homing portion of this. And then of course there's other things like spread cycle, which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial at the moment and other functionality. The reason that I don't cover it is it's more advanced in its topic. So let's go back over here and start the configuration now i will make a mistake or two on purpose to show you some of the things that you'll need to address when working with this and it's done by design so don't panic when it doesn't work the initial first time but it's necessary to show you what to do so in this case, our platform I.O. currently is defaulted to the Mega 2560, but we need to set up our environment. So we're going to go to the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Now, all the boards that we'll be working with that work with Marlin will be listed in here. So I'm going to do a control F over here, and I'm going to search on GTR underscore V1. So now you can see the board type. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy this. Note the actual chipset type. That's the big black chip in the center of your board. And I'll show you that in a second. And that's the writing that should be on it. They have known or do on occasion place an alternative chip there. If it is not the alternative chip, or excuse me, if it's not the chip you see here, then they need to update Marlin because it will function differently. So let me show you that real quick. So over on the workbench here, you can see that there's an actual chip right here. Now the writing on that should correspond to what we saw inside VS Code. So let's go back over to VS Code. We're gonna minimize core source. We're gonna to go to configuration.h. We're gonna scroll down until we see the actual motherboard type, and we're gonna paste what we just copied. Next thing we need to do is set up the serial port, and that's gonna be negative one. And then we need to set the stepper. So we're gonna search on A4988, and that'll bring us to the steppers. Now, as you can see right here, 
we're only going to be working with the X driver type. So that means we need to find ours, which is going to be the TMC 5160. So we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it right here. Next, what we need to do is actually look at steps per millimeter. So I'll do per underscore millimeter. And apparently it's not bringing it to it because they've changed it. So we'll do step per and that'll bring us to steps per unit. So I guess they took out the millimeters since the last time I've done a tutorial on this. So it's defaulted to 80, 80 and 400. This will be important when configuring in advanced configuration. So in the advanced configuration, we're going to search on 800 and I'm going to hit enter a couple of times to get us to the correct place which is right here for the X current. And as you can see, this is going to be correlated or there's going to be a correlation to the 80. So if you change this to 160, that would mean that you would need to change this to 32. If you were to change this to 320, then this would be changed to 64. And if you were to change it to, let's see, 640, this would then change to 128. And then of course it goes to 1 256th of a step for the precision that you can work with for micro steps. Now, I don't recommend going up to 128 because it starts to diminish the actual precision. But over here, we do need to change our resistor sense. It's defaulted for the other types of steppers being the TMC 2209 or the 2208 or the 2130. So in this case, it's going to be zero seven five for the actual value so now that we've got that set what we're going to do next is we need to set up sensorless homing but because it's spy we need to search on sw underscore spy which will bring us to use or excuse me tmc use sw or software spy so we're going to hit the control forward slash to remove the comment. And then we're going to turn on debugging. So I'm going to search on TMC underscore debug. And this will bring us hopefully, if I spell it right, to the debug monitor driver status. This is only to troubleshoot. You should disable this after you get it functional. So I'm going to find the other one real quick here. And as you can see, it's TMC debug. So I'm going to do control forward slash again to remove the actual comment. Now I'm going to search on with a control F sensorless homing. So this, I may have to go up one here. There we go. And I'm going to do control forward slash again. So as you can see, now it's enabled and I'm going to leave this at the default, but this is where I'm doing a mistake on purpose to show you what's occurring. This is going to be very important because this number now has changed. So let's try and build this. But before we build it, we need to set up the platform IO environment from what I said earlier being the INI. So we have to find the INI in the folder, which is the STM32F4. And we're gonna search on GTR underscore V. And that'll bring us to our default environment, which I'll highlight here. Then I'll copy that. Then I'll go back over to platformio.ini and I'll paste it right here. Here. So when we build this, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to do a clean because the default over in here 
has the actual build that they do to check what the environment actually builds in being the default of Mega 2560. So I'm gonna clean that out with the clean garbage can down at the bottom. Then I'm going to click the checkbox over here to build it. Now this may take a moment to build, but once it's complete, what we'll do is we'll actually copy out the platform IO in the build folder that'll form in here. Right now it's building all the stuff it needs. If it does fail on the first try, try clicking this a second time. If it fails like it is now, it'll tell you what the very first mistake is. Right here it says X min end stop inverting equal true. So let's copy that. That's actually on configuration.h. So I'm gonna just copy. Then I'm gonna go over to configuration.h. I'm gonna hit control F, then control V. As you can see, it says false right now, so I'm gonna say true. That will change the logic for our build. So I'll click build over here. That means that uh, it needs to be set this way by design in the actual build. Now there are other functionality down in here for end stops. I just need to find it real quick. Apparently I'm not finding it quick enough but there is a direction of the end stop that I'm looking for. I may not cover it only because I can't find it right away, but there's a direction that you can change to invert the direction of your actual stepper. And there's two ways to do that. So let me search on inverting right here and see if I can find it real quick. Here we go. So, there's a couple of different inverts. Here's one for, let's see, right here, direction. So this will change the direction that your actual stepper will go, but we'll cover that in a second. So let's go back over to the workbench for a second. I gotta pop out the drive to actually set this up to load. And I'm gonna place this inside of here. Then I'm going to place this inside the computer so you may hear a beep. And I'll go back over to the desktop of the computer. And what we need to do is actually first find our build inside of here, which is going to be firmware.bin. So I'll right click and I'll say reveal in file explorer. It'll come up. We'll right click on this in just a second, but let me show you the drive. As you can see right now, it's got firmware.cur on it. That was the last good build that I loaded. So when I right click and I send this to the drive, what'll happen is if this successfully loads, it'll be renamed to this. If you have the same configuration that you wanna load twice, meaning exact duplicates, you would then rename this to this and use that to load it. So. Now that I've covered that, let's go back over to the workbench for a second, pop out the drive, and I'm going to connect it inside of here. So it's now connected. I'm gonna connect this at the moment. Now, as you can tell, it's not powering up because I'm not using the five volts. It will show a light though, but I will use direct power from the actual power supply. So I'm gonna plug this in. You'll hear a beep in a moment. You notice there's flashing over there. And so I'm gonna unplug this real quick because there's something I forgot to plug in, which is the most important part. And that's actually the connection for the stepper. So I'll plug it in right here. And if you need to reverse direction on these flat types, being the DuPont connectors, you can rotate them 180 degrees and that will also change the direction. So I'm gonna plug that in. I'm gonna go over to Pronerface now. So I'm gonna click on Pronerface so you can see this. Let me just bring it up here. So in Pronerface, we wanna connect, but it says COM port one. So we need to figure that out. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to type device manager. And you might not see this for a second. I gotta bring it over. There we go. So if we go inside here, you can see that it's COM port six. 
So, in order to connect to this, what we need to do is we need to click on here and it's already displayed, but you can also highlight this and put in six. So, let's connect. It says printer is now online. So let's test the movement real quick. So I'm gonna try moving 10. Now it's going in the opposite direction of what I thought it would be. And so let's try minus, and that works. Now let's try the actual homing. Now this will fail. Notice that grinding? That means that it doesn't know that the actual diag pin has an overcurrent situation. So I'm gonna pull the power, let it de-energize for a second. I'm gonna place this back in the center, and then I'm gonna go over to the desktop. I'm gonna to go to VS Code, and inside VS Code, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back over to here. First of all, it's going the wrong direction that I don't want, so I'm gonna change this to true. And then over here, this actual value of eight is incorrect. It's actually one. This changed a while ago with the new version of Marlin's firmware. So I'm gonna to have to rebuild this. While that's rebuilding, I'm gonna pop out the drive and I'm gonna place it in the computer. So you might hear a beep in a second. I'm doing it off camera on purpose because you've already seen it once. And we can watch the build in here Hopefully, well, it already has one build, but it's gonna overwrite this one. So let's just wait for this to happen. There we go. And it's a new file. So let's go to Reveal and File Explorer. You can see that it was recently built as of the time right here. So let's just double check to make sure this one didn't load before. Now let's right click and we'll place it here. Actually, the other one did load before, but you can see the time difference. So, now I'm gonna pop this drive out and go over to the workbench again. I'm gonna place this back in here. I'm going to connect over here, and then I'm going to energize the board. This might take a second. At this moment, I would like to thank my patrons for, uh, donating to make these tutorials possible as well as people on paypal and i will place a thank you at the end of this video but let's give this a try again let's try and connect now we're online the other thing i forgot to show you was the actual debug check for m122 and what this says is that it's actually okay down here that was the debug message that i was using to check this now let's check the movement. Now it's moving in the direction I want. Now let's try home. So, if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you very much for your time.